So living in a cabin in the woods for 30 years sounds very romantic. Is there anything that you miss about that lifestyle? I, I miss it terribly. I miss being in the woods. I live in the suburbs now. And um, when I take photographs of my garden or my yard, I always try to position the camera where you can't see other houses. I just, I just love that isolation. I've often said that if, if you showed me 10 pictures of places where I could live from like a crowded city to a remote mountaintop, I'd, I'd be on that mountaintop. So I miss the quiet. I miss the isolation. I miss, you know, the details of nature that were just part of our everyday life when we lived in the Upper Peninsula. So, yes, you mentioned how Helena came to you in the middle of the night, which is a really cool story. Um, how did Rachel appear to you? Do you remember? Yes, um, Rachel was inspired by an incident I read about a long time ago. And this was an incident where um, a toddler found a handgun in his mother's purse. He was sitting behind her in the car and he shot and killed her. And, you know, it just always stuck with me because I thought, at some point, this little boy is going to grow up. You know, he's going to find out what he did. And so how will that knowledge affect him at that point? You know, how, how could you go forward knowing that you had killed your mother, even though it was unintentional and unknowing? So Rachel has the same situation. You know, she believes she's responsible for her parents' deaths. And that's what's basically sent her into a, a tailspin for her, her life. She's living in the mental hospital as self-imposed penance for her, her childhood crime, or so she thinks, but, you know. I actually looked for a fairy tale uh, that I might structure the second book on, but none spoke to me the way that the Marsh King's daughter did. What, uh, what I did was I was inspired by several fairy tales. Um, the White Snake by the Brothers Grimm was one. Uh, the element that I'm using in that is um, the main character in that fairy tale believes that he can understand this, the languages of insects and animals. And that's an element that I use in The Wicked Sister. Rachel believes that she has that ability too. And then I also used um, Snow White and Rose Red. That's a fairy tale where two sisters make friends with a bear in the winter that turns out to be, you know, an enchanted prince because, of course, why wouldn't he be? And so um, bears also feature quite largely in The Wicked Sister. And so, and there are two sisters as well. So, and then the whole setting of this beautiful log cabin in the middle of an isolated forest that is almost a fairy tale in itself, you know. Um, I think the language is so lush, particularly the language that Hans Christian Andersen uses in The Marsh King's Daughter. Uh, I have an excerpt from the t fairy tale at the beginning of the book, and the last line is uh, talking about how the Marsh King's Daughter, who was, a, it was a stump that this beautiful Egyptian princess sits on, but it turns into the evil Marsh King's Daughter who, who takes her under the water. And it's, the last line is, great black bubbles rose from the slime, and with these, every trace of the princess vanished. Oh, that's just so beautiful. <laughs> Even though it's very dark, yeah, it's true. Yeah, the darkness of the, um, uh, the, the real Grimm's fairy tales uh, sort of reflects us, and, and nowadays we know um, about psychopaths, and we, you know, they're, they're not just evil, but they there's an issue. Um, so is it disturbing to you to write about um, that kind of mental imbalance in people and characters? I don't find it so. I think it's, it's realistic. Um, many years ago, I knew of a family and they adopted three children. And two of the children flourished in the new environment. But the, the oldest child had some serious issues. And eventually, because they couldn't control his behavior and he became violent toward his brothers and sisters, they had to put him in an institution. So they had to make a choice between that child and the other children, and they love them all. And it, it just really sticks with me. I have four children, and fortunately, they're all super intelligent and wonderful human beings, right? <laughs> but what if I didn't? And, the, and those are the sorts of what if things that writers like to explore. Uh, many people have less than perfect childhoods or their parents are not very good. And so again, you know, these are the things that, that interest me to explore in my fiction. Mm -hmm. 
I do a lot of rearranging, to be honest, because um, in my early drafts, I tend to rush the story. I tend to hurry through it. And I tend to even skip over scenes that should be written because I'm just eager to get the story down. So for instance, with the Marsh King's daughter, uh, there was one point where I literally, I printed out the manuscript and I cut it into scenes and I laid it out on a very long table and I, I physically rearranged the scenes almost like storyboarding. So that's one thing that is, is actually very fun for me to do, you know, is to find the, the best way to tell the story and, you know, 